Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about other creations beside us. He tells us that he created the malayaka, the uh, angels, first. And these malayaka or angels are created from pure light, which explains why you can't see them. Nobody sees light. You can only see what light reflects off of. He tells us that he created the jinn, and the jinn were before us. The jinn were not angels, but rather they were made from a smokeless fire. The difference between the jinn and the angels is something called free choice. The nature of the jinn was that they could make choices. Allah gave them opportunities and then let them make their own choices. Allah tells us in the Quran that there was one Iblis from the jinn. By the way, he used to worship Allah. You know that? He used to worship Allah exactly when the sun comes up. When it's first a little ball out there on the horizon. When it's straight overhead and when the sun is sinking down. Just when it makes a ball on the other side. Those three times. And that's the three forbidden times for us, isn't it? Yeah. But when Allah created the best of his creation, human beings, Adam, actually Adam. He commanded all of creation, bow down, for I have created the best of my creation. And all creation obeyed Allah and bowed down, illa iblis, except for iblis. Because of what? What was the word that Allah used in Quran? Because of his what? His what? Kibr. His kibr. And what is the problem with kibr? Kibr from the root kabara. There's another word that comes from the same root. Akbar. And who is akbar? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu akbar. Allahu Akbar. So whenever a person stands up and says, well, I want, some, you know, I want some of that for me. It doesn't work. Allah does not accept any partners, no associates. There are no gods beside God. He made Iblis aware of the fact that by disobeying him, that he would be one of the denizens of the hellfire for eternity. What did Iblis say to that? In the Quran, what did he say? What was his response? Do you remember? He said, I don't care. Just let me take him, Adam, and his offspring with me to hell. Did he do that? Was that his idea? And Allah told us in the Quran. I'm in Surah Baqarah right now, chapter 2, verse 208. Oh, you who believe, enter into Islam perfectly. Do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. Verily, he is to you a plain and open enemy. What were the footsteps of the shaitan? Part of his footsteps was he worshipped Allah. Part of his footsteps were that he was elevated up really high, actually. To the level of angels, although not an angel himself. Right? But the footsteps that we're talking about here is when somebody starts getting so proud. Ah, look at me. Do you know who I am? Ah. And this is kibber. Riyah leads to kibber. Kibber leads to shirk. And shirk leads to the hellfire. And may Allah save us from that. So this is really a good lesson for all of us to be aware of. Of course we know drinking alcohol, taking drugs, illegal sex, killing people. All of these things are horrible. Everybody knows this is wrong. But a lot of times we overlook the fact that we were also commanded not to have this kind of false pride. And when I say we, I'm talking about all. Because this stands for the Jews in the Old Testament, the, the Christians in the New Testament, and the Muslims in the Last Testament. The same exact teaching. Get down off your high horse and walk along with the rest of the people. That's an expression we got down where I come from.
And Allah tells us in the Quran, or do they think they'll enter into Jannah, paradise, without the fitna, the trials as came to those who passed away before you. They were afflicted with severe poverty and ailments and were so shaken that even the messenger and those who believed along with him said, when will come the help of Allah? Yes, certainly the help of Allah is near. In chapter 29, the very beginning, do the human beings think they're going to be left alone on saying we believe and they won't be tested? And for sure Allah is going to test them just as he tested those before to do what? And he said it, to show the truthful of those that are true and the liars and their falsehood. So what is shaitan to us? He is a test. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that every one of us when we're born, there's a kareen, which means an intimate, a close one, attached to you like your juggler vein. That shaitan is a part of your test. That's why when we go through life, there's always somebody there trying to mess up the good things that we're trying to do, isn't it? Somebody always telling you, like even you did a good deed, you want to give some charity, and somebody's saying, you know, you show that off a little bit, let people know what you're doing, right? Any good deed, mess it up for you. And certainly help you with all the bad deeds. <laughs> Who is this devil? Is he real? Or is it a figment of your imagination? Or is it just something in philosophy? According to the Quran, he's very real. Substance is real, you just don't see it. He lived before us, he's still alive today. That's an amazing subject right there, isn't it? That's amazing. Sometimes I hear Muslims tell me if I just had more knowledge, you know, more knowledge. How many times you heard that? If we just had more knowledge, I'd like to encourage all of us to have more knowledge because definitely this is something important in Islam, but at the same time, do you think just knowledge by itself is going to save you? Is that going to be your salvation? Because wouldn't you think that the devil has got some knowledge by now. I mean, after all, he was a witness to the creation of Adam himself, true or false. And he knows. I mean, he's been around. I, he's tried to mess up every single prophet. You heard Dr. David Milliken talking about Jesus being tempted by the devil. Right? Even the devil tried to bother Muhammad and then finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his kareen submit. But even then the shaitan kept trying to bother him, didn't he? Try to bother all the Muslims. Where did evil come from? Did you want to know that? A lot of people will tell you evil, evil came from the devil. They said it. I heard a lot of people tell me that. It comes from the devil. But if it came from the devil, that means the devil has power. Does the devil have any power? If he does, that means that Allah's got competition. If Allah has competition, then there's a power split out there somewhere. And that means shirk. And we don't believe in that. So according to us, nobody created evil except Allah. Allah created evil. How many think that's a mistake? Is that a mistake? Is that what I just said? Did Allah create evil? Yes or no? We we'll take a vote. <laughs> Tell you what, before you go too far, and I'll read it for you. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of daybreak. From what? From the evil that He created as a test for you and me. Who created it? Allah. Wow. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of daybreak from the evil that he has created, from the evil of the darkening night as it comes with darkness, and from the evil of malignant witchcraft, and from the evil of the envier, Hasid, whenever he practices Hasidin, he the Hasid, when he practices his envy. And by the way, that's a commandment in the Old Testament for the believers in the Bible. It's like the last commandment not to have envy. Same religion sent by God to the people before. 
And then finally, the last surah of the Quran. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the Allah, the God of mankind, and from the evil of the whisperer, whiswas, who whispers evil into the hearts of mankind, who withdraws from whispering after he catches you with it, who whispers in the breasts of mankind, from the jinn and mankind. Shaitan is from where? From both jinn and men. So there are devils that we don't see and some devils that we do see every day. And some of them we even voted for. <laughs>